So, so the the instrumentation used uh, in European brass bands was, uh, I guess, just mirrored in the United States, just because of the access of technology to the both. Yeah, and well, yes, you have you have the um, you have the families of brass instruments, and um, the Precht, um brass section would have been uh, two B flat uh, flugelhorns. Uh, then two uh, E flat alto horns. Um, he would also have some E flat natural horns, um, B flat tenor horns, a baritone, which might uh, precede the euphonium, um, mm -hmm. and then the the bass tuba that he and Moritz developed. So um, there was, and I don't remember what year. There was, I think, in Paris, a gathering of um, the best of the European bands, kind of like a band festival. Mm -hmm. And so the best of the French band and the Vprec brought his band, the best Italian band, stuff like that. They all got together and they they played. And the the sonority of, of Vprec's band, because of this rich, deep brass section, just knocked the rest of them. <laughs> out of I don't know if it was a contest, but yeah, yeah. you know they, it was. That's the one <laughs> <For sure>. thing. <laughs> and so after that, Sax got the contract for the French Army bands, so that they could uh, fill in their instrumentation, like the German band. So gotcha. that's kind of the model there. Um, the in America, of course, we had we had two E flats on top, mm -hmm. uh, the two B flats, and it's a higher higher pitch band an yeah. e flat band not a b flat band yeah <laughs> for sure yeah interesting and then we know that as the gilmore band and you know i guess always the marine band was kind of doing that but especially gilmore and the the marine band uh and then Seuss's band kind of re-popularized an integrated wind band we kind of saw that brass band tradition in america essentially die off and evolve into you know the american concert band movement whereas why do you think in europe the the brass band tradition has persisted as it has even to this day okay well i think um a lot of that has to do with the contests so in mm -hmm. great britain um to um keep their uh, i don't know their workers uh, give them something to do boost the morale uh most of those uh, companies, whether they were mills or whether they were mines, mm -hmm. um, sponsored brass bands, and then there were contests. And so that helped to standardize instrumentation and also uh, provided something for these bands to do and goals for them to strive to achieve. And I think that the contesting has an awful lot to do with maintaining that because well, you couldn't bring a mixed band into a brass band contest. Mm -hmm. And um, so I think that has an awful lot to do with that. Um, you know, most of the European, the, the continental bands are not strictly brass bands. They develop more of that now, just like we have in America with sort of copying the British style. Most of the European bands were, were mixed bands. Uh, the Rex band was a mixed band. It wasn't all brass. They had woodwinds on top of it. Now, a lot of the times there were just a few woodwinds, um, but they, they all had them. And I think that's what happened in the United States too. Besides the, the military bands like the Marine Band um, mm -hmm. and some of the other ones, um, I think they wanted the technique and the tone color of the woodwinds to add to the brasses. Mm -hmm. 